What's up, Virgo friends? How is it going? Welcome to my channel, The Intuitive Teacup. So happy to have all the Virgos in the house. However you resonate with the sign of Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, all are welcome. We are here to do your monthly uh, finances and career tarot spreads. Um, this is going to be from middle of December into mid-January, roughly. As you all know, energy is free-flowing. It is not fixed. So yeah, give or take with that window, roughly a month or so. Um, it is up to you to come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, my dear Virgo friends, um, to take away messages that you feel are meant for you for your best and highest good. You will know intuitively what those are and to discern away from the messages that are not meant for you. If they don't fit your circumstance or your scenario, it's probably not a message for you. Uh, you can drop it like it's hot. You can release that energy if it doesn't serve you in your story. Um, I do always say though, that being said, sometimes messages will resonate for you um, in the future, later down the line, a few hours, days, weeks. So if later down the line, something strikes a chord with you, take it and run with it, okay? These are supposed to be helpful, motivate you, uh, guide you, offer you some sort of empowerment. Uh, that is my goal, my desire here today. So let's try and have some fun. So for my Virgo friends looking for advice or wisdom regarding career, finances, money, jobs, resumes, all that good stuff. For my Virgo friends, <clears throat> take a couple more cards. Virgo, career and finances. Virgo, career and finances. <clears throat> That one. Everything else about this video will be written in the description box below. That includes the decks I'm using here today, as well as my social media. I'm the Intuitive Teacup on Facebook and Instagram. Um, as always, I ask you to drop a like, share, subscribe wherever you can. Most importantly on this video down here, I think it's somewhere down here, uh, because that helps this channel, this video gain traction. It gets it out to the audiences who wants to see it and need to see it. And again, that helps me a, a great deal. So without further ado, let's hop in for my Virgo friends. Your energy is presenting as the High Priestess. Oh, I love this card. Very beautiful, very like mystical, witchy energy. It's a card of Cancer. The High Priestess talks about our intuition. Frequently, she's like um, silent in that her form of communication um, occurs between her and spirit. It's, it's like a very very personal spiritual card frequently I, I sort of equate it to like mother mary type energy uh especially in, in that beatles song let it be right when i find myself in times of trouble mother mary comes to me i see this as that it's almost like this energy of needing to nurture yourself to mother yourself to to take care of your mind your body your soul there's some sort of difficult decision or a crossroads that a bunch of my virgos are at and, and they're not listening to their intuition or they're not trusting their internal guidance system. They don't have enough faith in themselves to make an informed decision or to make an accurate decision. But when this card pops up in a spread, it says, trust yourself, trust your intuition. And with that, it's not a decision that you need to make in haste. This says, think about it. You know, spend some time in, in peace and quiet, you know, in, in yoga, in meditation, you know, even when you're lying in bed at night, right? Uh, yeah, it's like take silent time with yourself to make informed decisions about your future. Something about like getting the chemistry right, getting the, the um, some of you may work as chemists. Uh, it, it's kind of, it's funny, it's being delivered to me in like terms of a magic potion, but that could even be like in the medicine field, getting the right ingredients if you're a chef, like a lot of different things, but it's something about like getting the concoction just right. Uh, maybe, yeah, some of you may work in like the restaurant industry or, or something like that. Yeah, but it's like the 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 answers you seek already rest within yourself so what's important is that you make sure you take that time on yourself you know a little bit of like soul searching time probably individual away from the group that's where the answers are going to be illuminated to you because i mean with moon energy which is what this is you're in the darkness right now there's a little bit of shadow things aren't made clear there isn't a great sense of of clarity of illumination it, it talks about the cycles uh things will things will come and go things will change the sun will rise and you will see um but it's almost like make sure your mind your body your energy is ready to receive those messages because something about clouded judgment you're not seeing things correctly or processing the information correctly the answers are all there but yeah it, it's it's something about like cleansing your body to make you ready to to receive the messages very a very deep message for my virgos interesting way to start yeah and clarifying by the page of swords the student 
learning of information, seeking information. Sometimes we look at this and we say it's the spy card, right? But that's not always in a bad sense, but it's trying to get more information out of a source or out of something or out of a book. Or maybe some of you are contemplating going back to school to like fluff up your degree to get to get a little, little more experience under your belt, take a few extra courses. Seeking of knowledge is really important here. And again, for a lot of you, it, it, it is confirmation. The knowledge is already within. It's like tapping into your inner knowledge. You're still a, it's funny, it's, it's presenting as like you're still a student of life or you're still a student at, of this skill, but you hold all the potential to increase the power, to increase your skills and capabilities. Practice makes perfect is sort of what's coming. And some of you, it's also kind of saying to me, don't be afraid to like change up the ingredients, to change up the mix, because it's all about trial and error. If you try it one way and it doesn't work, well, that's not a failure. That's a fantastic lesson of how not to do it next time. Or maybe via this mistake or, you know, situation that didn't uh, end in a way you had anticipated or desired, you can still walk away with very valuable lessons of, oh, I really like how we did this. It's this that isn't working. And I know that's all very vague in general, but this is a general message, right? But yeah, something about being the student of your intuition, trusting your intuition. And for those who aren't feeling confident in their ability to make the decision, if you're not feeling informed, read up on it. Go seek out more information. Read about it on the web. Go to the library. Take a course. It, yeah, um, practice. Practice makes perfect and don't be afraid it's, it's like, don't be afraid to open up the door to learning and making mistakes. Otherwise, you're never going to improve. The situation is never going to change. So what is going to be your challenge or focus December into January? The Four of Cups. All right, interesting. I'm going to clarify it. <clears throat> interesting. So the Two of Cups came in reverse. <clears throat> This may have to do with breaking away from a partnership or expanding the company on your own or going into work individually. If you're an entrepreneur starting your own business, away from what I'm thinking is like a really, <clears throat> it's funny, I don't think it's a negative situation. I don't think it's a toxic relationship. I think it's growth or time apart so that you can become, again, more versed on your own it does have to do with improving your self-confidence away from a team dynamic, going off on your own for the first time, making the sales call on your own without your mentor by your side. It's breaking away from a really lovely partnership or someone who's supported you, someone who's been your emotional rock. And this could represent, you know, leaving a spouse behind if you're traveling for work. It, you know, it, it's sort of having to distance yourself from a connection and I don't think you like that. It's coming up as your challenge. So the fact that this is in reverse, it's disappointing to you is what I'm getting here. Um, this is sometimes the card of boredom or complacency. But what I'm getting at is that it's boredom or complacency, give or take. It's like sort of a play on those words that you wish you were still in the team dynamic. I think you're longing to be with this person, the support system, this coworker, you know, the goose and maverick team dynamic, the dynamic duo, you guys always did everything together, you know, with all the bells and whistles, but now you're having to do it on your own and I'm getting sort of like a longing. It's like, you're always still thinking about them. It's not the same when they're not there. You know, these cups are enjoyable. You know, the potion you're concocting in metaphor, whatever that is, whatever skill or, um, uh, talent or thing you're creating, whatever you're sharing with the world in this profession, in this business and whatever it is, it's good, but there's a part of you that still thinks it would be better if this person were part of the dynamic, if this person were in, in it with you. And so a couple things here, <clears throat> if for those looking to, I, I, this almost reads as like a relationship thing, and it might be for some of you, if it, if it resonates for love, you know, take it and run with it. Maybe it's both. Maybe you used to work uh, with your wife or with your husband or with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe you were trying to start a business together and maybe, uh, it could be that like emotions got in the way of you guys succeeding, so you decided to like part ways. But there is something like, again, a longing for what used to be in this relationship, in this business and whatever. And the thing is, I think they're thinking about you too. This is a very unusual read for career, but um, it might be that they gave you a really um, 
a really stable foundation in which you thought you could like grow and thrive and and money would come in but now that you're on your own you're not seeing the immediate success or reward of 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 what you guys accomplished together so you're questioning is this best to go off on my own or 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 was i better in the team dynamic it's asking you to stand strong on your own though because whether or not you choose to go into business for yourself or whatever individually independently single whatever however that applies even if that's not forever for the long term there's a reason why you're on your own right now and i do think it has to do with building up your self-confidence of being steady on your own two feet of not having to rely on another person for their i almost said for their sympathies it's almost like this person this person was like your emotional rock when you were having a rough day they would be the ones to come in and be like you you know you got this virgo you're great you what you do is awesome it's like they were your cheerleaders your support your backup and that's great and that's cool but i think this is almost saying you need to learn to be your own support system your own cheerleader your own backup when you're not surrounded by people who are constantly I hate to say feeding your ego, but yeah, it's like you need to be able to face criticism or difficulty or hardship on your own and deal with the repercussions individually rather than falling back on someone else's emotional support. It's all about your strength. It's all about like building your confidence, your courage, your ability to like deflect when people say negative things at you. It's just like, nope, like it, it's, it's. There's an element to this that it's like you're a very sensitive person and you needed that person for emotional guidance or emotional support. And again, this is happening for a reason to make you stronger, to get you into more like warrior mode. So that especially if it has to do with like sales, if you get rejected or you have a nasty vendor or client or whatever, it's building up your armor. It's, it's building up like your protective armor. It's sort of shielding your heart without having that person always coming to you and sort of like, Ma maternal like coddling like it's okay and and no offense right I, I don't mean to like talk down to you or anything i just i'm just relaying the message that's coming through you're learning to be strong on your own that's going to be your challenge and for yeah for those who this isn't wasn't didn't end on a bad note you know maybe you're just separated because of the situation or temporarily there's a very strong and powerful connection here and again for those who want to get back with their uh, their person whatever that means in business or love romantic whatever it is there's absolutely potential for this, but rather than focusing on that, if you were to focus on what's in front of you right now, it's like make magic with what's on your table now. Focus on the here and the now in the moment. Don't let this relationship cloud your judgment or again, kind of like sentimentalize rose tinted glasses of the past. You need to be like focused on how to make your business or your skills or whatever thrive now. Then relationships can factor into it later. You're being asked to accomplish something on your own right now. That's, that's where your main focus needs to be. Not off dreaming about what could have been or should have been or what will be. It's focusing on the now. Bottom of your deck is love. For some of you, it does have to do with, um, yeah, focusing more on your, your job, your career, rather than relationships right now. That might be what this is saying as well. And again, it doesn't mean that you can't date or, or this or that, but if it's your main focus, there's going to be, there's just going to be trouble. There's just going to be trouble there. Something about love, love and relationships need to be put on the back burner for the next month or so work and focusing on your career your finances your job that's going to serve you better again in the next in the next month or so this may be about learning to love yourself to trust yourself to trust your ideas to follow your heart if it feels like your heart is calling you in a certain direction to to go down a certain path to acknowledge it to listen to it <coughs> it's like fighting on your own right there's no one else there to save you but you It's about not robbing yourselves of opportunities. Sorry, guys, one second. <coughs> My throat is dry. Apologies. It's about not robbing yourselves of what could be really beautiful, wonderful opportunities, destiny, fate, potential other partnerships, be it business or romantic, by being too afraid or too scared to wander this path alone. To something about seeking knowledge again I, I could be going to college for some of you enrolling in courses participating in some sort of skill or, or um, 
job or opportunity, internship, whatever, you've never done it before and there exists some fear here that you're not going to get it right, you, it's, yeah. And by denying yourself the opportunity to at least go and try and be vulnerable, and it's like admitting you're the student, you're not the teacher, you don't know everything. You're sort of having to serve a larger group or someone else in, in a more powerful dynamic so that you can gain the information. <coughs> I'm really sorry, guys. Some of you are in this like waiting game, not going after it. You're just kind of settling and you're robbing yourselves of opportunity. It's like you're a thief. Something too about like a thief of your heart. Someone has, someone has like taken your heart and run with it and because you can't be with them right now, it's kind of, it's clouding your judgment. It's getting in the way of you focusing on your, your career and your finances. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry for the coughing. This is saying to me something about daydreaming. There's a lot of cards that are not taking action. There's a lot of cards that are just thinking about it. Do I or don't I? Do I enjoy this? Do I not? And it's almost like you keep getting lost in the process when you go to open up the book and, you know, read five chapters. Your, your brain or your mind starts to wander. It goes back to like that person who stole your heart. It goes back to that person who, it's like you, you're, you want to be with them. And yeah, it's, it's clouding your judgment. It's getting in the way of like getting the, getting shit done. <laughs> for some of you, friend came up in reverse. So it's for some of you, it's someone you may have put in the friend zone or vice versa and you want it to be more. You don't want this. this, this reading is romantic. I'm sorry, guys. But I just, I have to read it because it's here. This is a, like a friendship that you want to take to the next level or you agreed to put the romantic relationship on pause and yet it's like you can't tear your mind away from it. You keep thinking about it. Something about this, there's a victory at the end. There's light at the end of the tunnel, but again, you need to like, you need to finish the race. I almost see this as like the end of a race where, you know, you, you run past and, um, you know, you cross the, the ribbon, the finish line, and then there's happiness, there's joy, there's success, there's celebration. There's happiness at the finish line, but again, you need to go through this process on your own and you're not taking action. There's a decision. Do I stay or do I go? Do I go this way or that way? Left or right? Safety zone or off into the unknown, the scary? I think a lot of you are being nudged in a direction to go off um, to, to new places, to explore new things. Again, student vibes, understanding new information, new knowledge going to some sort of seminar or like taking a year off to travel. And, and it would be to do that to improve the skills to, again, it, it kind of like internship vibes, but maybe doing that, it's like you have to separate yourself from someone you really love. Um, and it doesn't have to be romantic. It could be being away from the office and your office feels like, you know, your work family, they're your comfort zone. They're the people you rely on They're you know, they're, they're feeding, you know, your emotional stability, right? When you have bad days. So yeah, when you're off on your own, it's a little bit scary. It's intimidating. Again, the darkness, right? There's something you fear about it. Your defenses are up. Do I trust this? Do I want to move forward with this? I just keep getting by not moving forward and staying in like your emotional comfort zone. You're robbing yourself of a really important opportunity. And I just heard fear is not your friend. Yeah, it's like finding healthy ways to cope with your fear and, and like facing the truth. Keep trudging forward, even though you may be slightly intimidated. Because look, there are clear skies up ahead, right? Again, we talked about the changing of cycles, dark to light. As you seek more information, you're going to gain more clarity on that business idea, how to make the money better again. There's By exploring new avenues... I'm just getting, there's going to be light shed on the situation and there's going to be some sort of like epiphany or s something about with the four, the four of wands, it's if any four in tarot is like a safety zone. It's a comfort zone. It's, um, but it's also like a very solid, steady foundation. I don't think you guys are there yet. I, I think it's like, you're deciding, should I go on this new adventure? Should I take this new position? Should I, whatever. Once you decide to and stop waiting, that's when things really start to bloom and grow. But it's this in-between of, of not deciding, this indecision. 
it's kind of it's, it's silly to say but it's kind of blocking your blessings your judgment is being clouded because you're afraid to leave what is familiar emotionally familiar behind this is this is sort of calling you to take some sort of risk to take some sort of leap of faith because i'm just getting it's for your own benefit um by by hesitating or straying away from from what you may find intimidating or fearful. Again, you're robbing yourselves of, of important opportunities and it may be for collaborations with important people down the road. Someone who, who's like, um, kind of like a magician in your life, someone who sparks that magic. Yeah, uh, something about leaving the, the comfort zone, the safety zone, going into unfamiliar territory, that it's like metaphorically your job or your career it's in like the chrysalis phase and it's trying to become a butterfly it's trying to open up it's trying to expand jupiter energy something about a sagittarius may play a key role in your life yeah the road less travel is going to lead you to beautiful things but because it's coming up as your challenge or focus getting yourself motivated to do that it's it's going to be challenging so much of this has to do with a longing of the emotional heart space. I want this, but I'm too afraid. I want this, but I'm too scared to communicate it. I want to live here, but I'm too scared to pick up and move, you know, away from everybody I love. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> but what is delaying the decision doing for you? I will pose you that question. Why are you waiting? What, what, what is being, or what can you gain in moments of waiting? just based on the cards here not much it, it sort of feels like this is overdue like it's past its due date some of you may be literally like turning in a term paper that was due two weeks ago or something like that like you're having to work on it over christmas break it could be something like that like you're waiting but you're you're in like this dreamy state again it's just, it's clouding your judgment you need to focus on like action uh it, with sagittarius seasons all it's wand it's action it's passion it's energy it's motivation it's forward movement it's travel then capricorn season is building it the tangible, the money, like going in and getting your hands dirty, work hard, right? There, we're not in this dreamy water element of, oh, wouldn't it be nice? And it's so romantic and I love you. And yeah, it's time to like nose to the grindstone, like get, get some work done so that you can enjoy it later in Pisces season, right? Which isn't, isn't terribly far away, but all right. So what is the help available to my Virgos? This is going to be a long video. The nine of a Thames, yeah, something weighing very, very heavily on you, something keeping you up at night. Again, something about the un the lack of clarity in the darkness. Your mind is trying to figure out like this puzzle and the pieces just don't fit. You don't know how to solve your dilemma. The Emperor. Making decisions with authority and confidence. I think what's keeping you up at night in metaphor, right? This is something that's weighing heavily on your mind and potentially your heart is how to move forward. The emperor just does it. He makes decisions with authority and for better or worse, you know, he's going to build the empire. He, it's taken him many years to gain this important knowledge on how to succeed specifically in business. But he does it. He makes it happen because he's a king of action. Again, fire suit, Aries, very headstrong, very, very confident. Um, sometimes very traditional, right? You're sitting on an extremely solid foundation, but you don't realize it yet. I don't think you've tapped into your true potential. And I, I pardon the cheesiness, but like your true magic there's some sort of skill or talent or ability that you have, but it's almost like perfecting it, learning more about it so that you can control it. I, I'm sort of getting like, this is such a funny metaphor, but like um, we think of uh, uh, people with like, you know, supernatural powers, you know, like Matilda. Okay, good example. We'll go with the lighthearted example, Matilda. She has to figure out how she can make things move with her mind. It, and I know this is a silly example, but I'm trying to keep it light so that you guys understand. You know, she, she wants to move things across the table. She has to try. And then sometimes the milk spills. Then sometimes it just glides. Like sometimes it just works. And then by the end of it, she's having a party and there's, you know, poker chips and cards flying through the air and popcorn and she's dancing and it's fun. But yeah, it's like you have to devote the time and the energy to exercising your mind. It's like your mind is a muscle, that cheesy expression, without spending time with yourself and this skill, whatever you're trying to perfect, it's never going to progress. It's never going to get anywhere. And there is something here about when you sit down to do it, to learn about it, to perfect it, your mind strays. You go into like dreamland and you're just not there anymore. 
it's like focus. Some of you may be having focus issues, like attention, like attention deficit disorder. And no shade, I'm just saying it because it's coming through. It, when you when you sit down to do this task or wherever you go, however it is, you're not achieving what you need to be achieving because your head is in the clouds or you're otherwise prioritized. There's lots on your mind. You need like a business state of mind, business savvy. Focus on the empire, right? Um, you know, if, if you're the emperor, right, the, the followers will come, right? The clients, the vendors, the friends, the romantic partnerships, right? That will come in time. It's like, if you build it, they will come. You need to focus on getting this company up and off the ground, if, if that resonates for you. It's almost like you're so scared to start because your mind is just, there's a million different ways to do it or there's a million different thoughts that are bombarding you. Start small, but with the intention of growing big. <coughs> you know, the emperor had to start somewhere, right? He had to start with the one. He had to start with the ace. Even if he had... $100 in his account, some of that money was going to go towards building his empire, his career, his job. Again, you're sitting on emperor energy, but what's, what's clouding your judgment is something about your thoughts. You can't mental, it's like you're just mentally stuck. You're mentally constipated. You're not letting ideas and creativity, creativity flow through you. And yet for some of you, you may work as an artist in some sort of creative field with all this cup energy, the creative juices aren't coming. The creative juices aren't flowing. Maybe you're looking at it too analytically and you need to feel it. That could be for some of you. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. And actually, if you're an artist and yeah, something about whatever your piece or your artwork is, you know, your poetry, your song, your painting, your dance, this romantic partnership or beautiful friendship, you know, whatever it was or could be, this actually may serve as inspiration in how to move forward. Again, if this was a business partnership, you may have learned a lot of lessons from them, how to perfect the skill and technique of your business. Now take what you've learned and like take it and run with it, apply it in the future. They may serve as important motivation for how you, how you transition into this new phase with your company, into this new job. Something about like an emperor state of mind, power. You're sitting on tremendous power. Boss lady mode, you know, boss man mode, whatever. Fake it till you make it. Confidence. Get it started. Get it off the ground. Aries energy. It's the beginning of the zodiac. It's starting. For a lot of you, starting is the hardest part. That That's sort of what I'm getting. And it is too. It's like you sit down to do it and you just can't start writing the paper. But once you're, you know, several paragraphs in, it starts flowing. It's like the creativity flows, it comes back, but it's almost like you need to say goodbye to something or someone to allow more space, maybe it's mental space, mental clarity, to allow like new ideas to come out of you. Very interesting message. All right, what is your advice or guidance? The Six of Pentacles, all right, reciprocity. Underlying energy is the three of wands, waiting for your ships to come in. <clears throat> Again, there's something here about longing, about waiting for someone. It's definitely this person. I don't know who this is, but... A lot of you, it does feel romantic. It's like you're you're at a crossroads of following your following your heart in terms of your career versus following your heart in terms of romantic partnership. It seems like you're having trouble reconciling the two right now, and and you go back and forth, back and forth. It's it's like you want the perfect mix, you want the perfect potion where you can have both. But again, there's a reason why you're being called to go down this road by yourself, but you're hesitant. Even if when you're on your own, it's like you're always checking your phone for text to see if they've reached out to you or something. And it's impacting your money flow. Uh, something about reciprocity, you're having trouble, not, you're not putting in all the work and all the effort and all the energy that you could. And I'm not saying you none of it, right? I don't mean to insult or offend. I'm just getting, you could be doing a lot more work and you're going, you would see the results coming to you faster. Reciprocity. You get what you give. If you sit down to, I'm just using this in metaphor, write the term paper and you only write a couple sentences, 
you're never going to be able to turn it in for the grade. You're never going to pass the course. You're never going to get your degree. Like it's like you're avoiding, you're, you're delaying the, the end goal. So yeah, for, for some of you who are especially struggling with money or, or looking to hear back or, or whatever it is, you need to extend the effort. You need to start putting, if, not, if you're not putting any or some work into it, this could just be putting more work into it, more energy, um, making more time in the day to focus on like, um, like crunching the numbers or, or something that's going to progress your business rather than waiting and again, kind of like this, this dream of when will it happen and what could be. Um, I do like that this card is coming up um, because it, it does follow this. So it's like, this is an indecision of which, which path do I go down? Which, which road do I take? It seems like your advice or guidance is choosing it. And then you're going to start seeing the results of your action come in slowly. I am getting slowly. Once you decide the, the course of action you're going to take, you know, to enroll in those classes or to seek out some sort of mentorship or guidance, whatever it is, your ships will start to come in slowly, but it's all about reciprocity. There's a balance to it. You get what you give. So if you're not willing to put in the time and effort, you're never going to see the results. And that in itself is a message. If you're at a job and you're just not willing to give it any more of your time and energy, maybe it's not your long-term job. Maybe it's a sign for, for you. Again, trusting your intuition is so important. If you're not willing to put out any more energy or effort into where you're currently at, maybe it's time to like switch directions and give your time and energy to something or someone else. Because yeah, th there could be some sort of luck or fortune in, in changing directions. And I said that to the other two earth signs as well, especially, well, both. Taurus and Capricorn had very interesting readings of uh, choosing one direction and then going another or going back on what was done or what was said. And it was all in a good light, but maybe that means something to someone here. Um, yeah, if it's almost like you're, you're tapped out or I'm getting like a metaphor of like, it's like, There's something is lifeless. There's just nothing left in it. Maybe it has to do with a relationship, but I don't think it does. It may have to do with leaving a current job to go to something else to pursue your dreams. I don't know why this metaphor is coming up. I don't know if some of you work in like the medical industry, but the idea of like tapping a vein and trying to draw blood, like blood levels, it's like nothing's coming. You're missing the vein. The, the, the accuracy of it isn't there. You're, you're missing the main vein. You're missing the heart, right? Are you focusing on, on the heart space, what your heart wants? And I am getting like tapped out, especially if you're at a job that it's just, it's draining your energy and you have no life or, or you know, no vibration left in you to, to take those night courses to pursue your actual dream. It may be saying like you, you've tapped the well on this one. There's nothing left to give at this job. It, it may be time to move on and focus elsewhere. How long are you going to wait before you start to see the rewards and is it worth it? Do you know what's on those ships coming in? Or is it like maybe someday this, you know, the job I've been at for 10 years will give me a raise, but nothing yet. It's like, well, when are you going to have those conversations? How long are you going to wait? <clears throat> Yeah, some of you feel like you got suckered into some sort of deal and you never saw any reward for your hard work and efforts. And part of you just, you kind of, you're at the point where you want to sneak away. Because you're trying to avoid confrontation or an important conversation with someone, it's easier to sneak off or run away. Maybe that's what some of you did and you're regretting it. Maybe that's what some of you went through in a romantic partnership. There wasn't clarity and like the thoughts regarding it are eating away at you. You're losing sleep at night because of it. And, and yeah, for some of you, it's like you feel chained. You feel shackled to some sort of job that there's no light at the end of the tunnel there. You want to pursue something that's more in alignment with your heart, but you're afraid to leave or you feel trapped or that you can't leave. Something about opening up the channels to have important conversations, taking back your power, again, your confidence. This is like magician vibes to me. You're sitting on power, you're sitting on potential, you're, you're sitting on creativity. I think some of you are in the, like that age old struggle of like the, the starving artist. You wanna go with some sort of career that's more creative or untraditional or the financial security isn't assured, but it's more in your heart space versus being at a job where you're just not getting anything back from it. You're, you're not seeing any reward for your hard work. <clears throat> I 
yeah, something about like your you're contributing to like the big guys, the the like the big wigs getting paid, but you're still getting like pennies at the job. It's something about unequal unequal power and unequal distribution of finances. All right, last last cards for wisdom, wisdom and guidance for my Virgos. Most important messages from my Virgos. <clears throat> the Ten of Cups. What is your long-term happiness? What is your fairy tale ending? What is your dreams coming true? Projection into the future. In 10 years from now, what is, this could be what is your 10-year plan. But with Cups, it's emotions. What is going to make you happy long-term? Maybe some of you le already left a partnership to pursue the career of your dreams and maybe you're not seeing reciprocity in it. You're wondering, am I going to see the return on this? I will say this, if this person means that much to you that they're your 10 of cups, they're your long term, you're, they're their, your bestie, you know, the person you dream about all the time, but you're not with them, maybe that's worth a reassessment of can you incorporate both? Can this person be involved in your 10 of cups while you're building not only your home, your career, your business, right, your finances, you know, your partnerships, your relationships, things that make you happy, right? It, it does seem like th there's a choice of one or the other. This might be saying, can you incorporate both? Can you have the dream job and the dream family? Absolutely. It's just about getting the concoction right. It's about getting the recipes right, seeing how to balance your time and energy. Do you have to live in this city? Can you take some sort of um, job where, you know, you work from home and you can be with the kids or be around the ones you love? Um, like, can you work remotely every couple days so that you can see your friends or your family? Like it's, it's being solution, solution oriented. If you're tapping an empty well and there's nothing left there, why are you staying? It's never going to change. If the well is empty, it's never going to fill your cup. It's never going to fill your heart, right? It's, it's finding a new source. It's finding a fresh source. And I think that has to do with money flow as, as well as making your heart happy. Very interesting, Virgo. All right, that's what I got for you. This was a, a complicated message. Um, some of you are looking to connect with a Capricorn again, too. That, that just kind of came up here. Um, but yeah, that's what I got. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what resonates for you. And I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, Virgo.